you and, and your family, you're basically all on the same page, mm -hmm. doing the same kind of thing. Yep. This is age 15-ish, 16. Yes. <laughs> okay. So you want to get out, you want to be independent, then what? Okay, so I was about 15, 16. Um, I had worked at Hardee's for like two years. I got another job um, in fast food that didn't last very long because I knew I didn't want to be in fast food anymore. Um, I got a job as a waitress for a breakfast and lunch place. Um, and I loved that job. That really helped. That was when I started going to college around 18. So right when I graduated, I got right into college. And I went- This is a local college or you- Yeah, went, State okay. College of Florida. Right. So I went there um, for two years. I was studying to become a dental hygienist because I was like, hey, I like teeth. This is cool. Like, let's do it. Every time I went to the dentist, I had a great <laughs> upper, like, experience. And I was like, I could do this. What? <laughs> yeah. you, who has the- Every time I go to the dentist, they make my <laughs> mouth bleed because I go once every five years. And then they yell at me for not flossing properly. And, Facts. But you had a good- you got a I good, wanted to be that person You're the that one yelled person. at others. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so. A lot of control. Yeah, but I'm very interested in the anatomy of human body and like the face and everything. So I loved my classes. Mm. Um, unfortunately, I didn't stay in, but it was um, not short after I had gotten a job in surgery scheduling for an orthopedic company. So I felt like my medical career was kind of taking off actually without a full degree. Yep. So I was like, oh, and I really loved orthopedics. Again, I just love the human body. So it just kind of fell into that category. So why do you think you love the human body? I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated. Do you, like, do you have any sense of where that might've come from or? Our creator. I think, oh. if, but at the, <laughs> the time I didn't know it. Yeah, yeah. The absolute being a creation mm. of his. Um, but at the time I didn't think about it like that. I was just fascinated by the human mm. body. And when I went through my anatomy and physiology classes, I was like, whoa, like this is crazy. And then I went through labs, dissecting cats, and I thought that was amazing. And so- It's so interesting to hear you say that because a lot of modern religion, they tell you body doesn't matter at all. It's all, you know, it's just kind of mamby-pamby stuff in your mm -hmm. head. But the ancient Christian writer Tertullian famously said, the flesh is the hinge of salvation. You know, the faith is a sacramental faith, so you okay. receive the Holy Eucharist or any of the sacraments. And the idea is it's a meeting of the physical with the metaphysical. Wow. And that's lost on so many people in modern life. But you're saying that actually, wittingly or unwittingly, was, was drawing you to the body. Mm -hmm. I but, love uh, the human body. I think it's yeah. artwork. I really do. Hmm. Like. I, I, um, when I started this journey on, I was very pro, like, nudity, like, because I, I love the human body. I think yeah, we're yeah. beautiful, truly. I have a different form of that love now for what, I, it's more, I love what God created instead of just nudity, hmm. you know, so, and that was. What's the, what, what do you see as the distinction? Perversion. That's pretty much the the distinction I, I feel now is like promiscuity versus, you know, a, like acceptance of something beautiful hmm. and seeing it for what God created it to be and how God wants it to be used instead of being perverted in it. Right. In, in almost a kind of idolatry. Like you think, you know, we could all name aspects of the human body that mm -hmm. we uh, are. Yes, <laughs> to. prone to. But, but if you, you know, so if you consider that, say in the context of marriage, as okay. it ought to be, and you say, okay, I really, you know, this part's kind of nice and this part. But if you consider that as part of the integrated whole of the person mm -hmm. that is then also a composite of body and soul, then that's all great. You know, it's like mm -hmm. a song of songs and we, yeah. it's really good. We're not trying to suppress that desire. No. Nope. But if you, if you make a, an idol, you know, you, you uh, have a thing for this body part or that mm -hmm. body part, then you, uh, it really becomes, in the, in the true sense of the word, a fetish. It and does. Like a fetish is a term that refers to pagan idolatry. Yes. Right, like a, you could have a fetish for some weird, like, you know, idol statue kind of, of thing. Of course, just and like you can have a foot fetish. Right, right. Absolutely. Or, or any, you know, really any physical mm -hmm. aspect. Absolutely. Uh, which seems to be so um, prominent today. Yes. We, we live in a very evil and adulterous generation, so a perversion is a very big part of that, I think. You were taken by the body mm -hmm. and then led into this per perversion. Yes. It started slow, kind of, yeah. but in that me being lost. Um, so I was in that job of orthopedics for two and a half years, going on three. Um, it was when I got the opportunity to start. And it was right before, right after COVID had just gotten out. 
like it was still like a mystery kind of, but we were hearing it online. I was hearing it about TikTok and people were kind of making fun of it, but it hadn't like shut everything down yet. So um, this was super early 2020, like January. Um, I had gotten reached out to by someone on social media and I was not big on social media at any manner. You like, just had a personal just a personal Instagram fitness page, or something. like soup. I was a nobody pretty much, like mm. very low following. Um, didn't have a Twitter, didn't have like a Snapchat, didn't have a Facebook. But it was fitness. Fitness. So there's also that, uh, you know, you, you're into the orthopedics, mm -hmm. you're into fitness. I you're am. Into, okay. I really love fitness. I've been working out since I was like 18. Before mm. my brother went off to the Air Force, I like I started working out with him in the gym and really? it was just awesome. And then I carried all that over after he left for the Air Force. I worked out so. once. Once? Yeah, it didn't, it didn't take. <laughs> you yeah. didn't like it? No. Not, not for me, no. I, um, I enjoy pushing yourself. Yeah. I enjoy pain in that manner hmm. because I have a hard time before, before I met Christ, I have a hard time feeling things. I really do. And what, do you, what do you mean by that? You, you I mean feel numb. I felt numb. Hmm. It, it's really difficult to, it was difficult for me to feel things like, sadness like I, I felt like I never cried I never I, I could get angry and my temper was probably a little worse than it should have been but crying was like not a big thing for me I didn't feel very emotional mm -hmm. I felt very numb to things and I didn't have a lot of friends either so like and Did I it chose bother you? that yeah so it, I truly chose that because I I was sick of having people in my life that would just come to me and complain about things and never want to change I'm like mm -hmm. I'm the kind of person that will tell you Hey, you effed up. Yeah, yeah. You would, you should probably do something about that. Mm. I'm here, yeah, yeah. but like, don't come to me and just cry and then cry about the same thing again and come back and do the same thing. I'm not going to listen after a certain like certain period. Are you a man? You sort of sound like a man. <laughs> See, I, this is like a, this is a thing I've actually gotten asked <laughs> before, but not like indirectly. Like, are you a man? I'm definitely a female. I'm a woman <laughs> <laughs> from birth, and I love that. But I have um, very masked like emotions. And I don't know if that's because of like how I was raised. Well, that, that's what I'm trying to get a at. a lot that I've gone through. When you say you have masked emotions, is it that you have them, but you don't express them? Or you're saying you don't even really have them. You are just actually kind of numb. You know, I do feel as though they're, they were masked because now since I gave my life to Christ, I don't feel like that anymore. Hmm. So I feel like damage was done in my past that just kind of suppressed and I felt as though I needed to be strong. Yeah. And I was on my own. So I could be on my own and crying, or I could be on my own and independent and like fearless and strong, what I believed strong looked like. And I didn't have a lot of people in my life, um, including my parents and my siblings. And I, you know, siblings are a funny thing because like, you like want to kill each other when you're younger. And then when you grow up, you kind of go through this phase sometimes where you don't speak. And then when you're an adult, you're like, there's no reason not to speak. You know, yeah. like we want to speak and we want to be cordial. We want to see each other. It's amazing. It's an actual like phenomenon to me. When you see your siblings grow up next to you, you take a little bit of a break. And then the next time you revisit them, in my case, they're full grown adults. Right. They're living lives. They have children. They've been married mm. and they're completely different people. So that's you know? more than a little bit of a break. Yes. It was like a couple years, like three, four years. So, but but when you were growing up, were your siblings like you in the sense that they didn't? No, no. So you were you were different. A, a little different, but I'm also the middle child. So I feel like okay. the middle child is just odd, just an oddball. Yep.